Thank you for joining us today on This is the X. I'm so thrilled we have a very special guest with us today that you are going to really enjoy hearing from. We have Sharon Hill. Sharon is the Vice President and Executive Director of Christian Women in Media, My Tribe. She's the founder of On Call Prayer. She's incorporated. She's also a teacher, a mentor, a leader, an international speaker. I mean, she does it all and she loves the Lord. So let's introduce Sharon Hill. Hi, Sharon. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor. Thank yes. you. So honored to be with you. I know you wear many hats and you are doing many things for the kingdom, involved with your church and everything else that you're doing. So I thank you for this time. So what's the Lord saying regarding, I know this is a season where more people are home and they have the extra time to pray and spend time with the Lord, but a lot of people either are not or they just don't know how to pray. Exactly. Well, I have a sobering question to ask. On a scale one to 10, especially during this pandemic, how would you grade your personal prayer life? One being not, don't pray too often. Uh, ten, you pray without ceasing or somewhere in between. In my life, all through my life, and everybody has a story, I've prayed more when I'm in crises and had heartache and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, um, it's important that we don't just pray, mm -hmm. but that we develop a lifestyle of prayer. And there is a difference. Yes. So do you pray only on the run or when you're in crisis? Many people, that's when they pray. And so, uh, you know, Jesus is our example. He is our role model. It says in Mark uh, 135, very early in the morning, when it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went into a solitary place, and he prayed early in the morning. And then it says in Mark 6, after leaving them, he went to the mountainside, and when evening came, he was all alone on the land, and he prayed. And then in Luke 6, it says, he went out to the mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. You know, he prayed truly without, without ceasing, as we should. And, you know, I one of my little mottos that I say and say to myself and everyone that I meet is, Let's not look into the face of another human being until we first look into the face of God. Yeah. So I, and you know, you might be surprised, but studies show that even Christians, followers of Christ, only spend about six or seven minutes a day in prayer. And you know, Barna survey shows that um, we are like, uh, we have one foot in the world, one foot into Christianity, and we are casual Christians, you know, and this is not a time to be casual. And so I just want to, you know, Spurgeon said it best uh, in the 1800s. He says, we must pray to pray and continue to pray uh, that our prayers may continue. <laughs> now, let me read that again. We must pray to pray. And continue in prayer that our prayers may continue. So that is my my word that I want to share with people uh, is that uh, that we really do take the time, develop an intentional lifestyle lifestyle of prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer changes things. Yes, it does. Prayers move mountains. Prayers yes. do so much. You know. There's so many different types of prayer, standing in the gap for a loved one, um, proxy prayer, like you said, praying without ceasing. And what always stands with me is prayers of the righteous availeth much. Yes, much. That's a good word. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I believe in my life that it's important to establish a quiet time. Now, I know we all pray when we're in our cars and we're driving along the highway and we're praying, or we may pray at the dinner table, or we might pray, you know, when we're in stream pain, just calling out to God. But I wanted to share a few um, points that, that work for me. I call it sharing with sharing. And um, first of all, this, this is my one uh, 
suggestion, quiet time suggestion, um, is that you establish a location to go pray. Now, I have a patio. It's a very small patio. So I put a little folding wall up on it. I have a fountain. I have candles. I have music. I have cushions and blankets, and oh, I get out there, it's just me and God and the birds. And it is so wonderful because I have established, purposely established a prey, pray away from everyone else. And that is my sanctuary. Now, your sanctuary could be something like that. Maybe it's a park bench, which we can do at the pandemic. We can go to the park, sit on the bench. It might be on your bed. I know some. Women have told me they get in the middle of the bed and put pillows around them, and that's their place. Or you have a chair that you sit in. But somewhere is your sanctuary. So set that up and go there daily. And the second thing is turn off all electronic devices. I mean, do not look at emails. If you look at your emails first thing in the morning, two hours have gone by, and you've lost your quiet, you've got to be in an appointment, you know. So turn off all of that. Now, you may use your phone to read scriptures or whatever, but don't respond to Facebook or anything, social media, before your prayer time. Now, the third thing is uh, your mind will wander. I don't know if you've had this happen to you, Destiny, but sometimes I'm in my quiet time. Oh, my gosh, at 10 o'clock, I got to call so-and-so. I got an appointment at 11. I got to go to the cleaners. I got to And my, I'm off of prayer, and I'm on to what I need to remember. So I say, have a legal pad. Have a notepad. Write down your to-do list for the day, and then you written it down. You get back. To, to your scriptures, to your Bible, to prayer. So do that. Also, uh, when you're reading your prayer list of people, call those names out loud. And uh, it's just moves heaven and earth to pray for them that way. And of course, you can always read scripture and insert your names in the scripture. Now, another thing I that's worked for me I have quite a story, as we all do, and I learn. I gained my healing through journaling. And so um, I have published a journal. It's very, very different. And in that, it is a three-ring uh, notebook binder. That's a copyrighted book, but it's not bound on purpose. The reason is that I had people tell me that they didn't journal because they were afraid someone might find it or read it after they pass away and they had very intimate stuff written down. So this sometimes you need to be very intimate with God and pour your heart, heart out on paper. But you can always take out those pages later and after you work through a crisis or whatever. So that's one reason. Another reason it is uh, is a three ring binder is that uh, I really, and this is the main thing, I really believe on having photographs of the people you're praying for, of your children, of your grandchildren, of your friends. Put a photograph in there, clip it in, or a business card from someone that you're praying about. Or maybe you read, read something out of the Daily Bread and it was fabulous. Tear it out, clip it in. Or I have a friend that just sends me the most beautiful prayers email. I will print them out, put them in this journal, because this is really a tool, and I use highlighters and tabs. Now, this journal has 680 scriptures with 13 translations. It comes with a CD tutorial called Sharon with Sharon, and two ink pens. And you know, we forgot what he did yesterday, because we're so worried about today. You go back several days or a month and see what you prayed about. Well, he answered that prayer Write that in red. And when you see all the red ink, it gives hope. I also, now the scriptures say, this is biblical. It says in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3, write my vision. Make it plain upon a tablet. But these things I plan won't happen right away, the scripture says. Slowly, steadily, surely. The time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If this seems slow, do not despair. For it not will be will not be overdue a single day. Just be patient.
and that's Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. So that's why I, this is how I pray, is I, I write a letter to God sometimes and put it in here. And I brand this journal for other ministries. De uh, Destiny, let's see your journal. It's so mine. That's yours. It's my journal, and it's, it's amazing. And a lot of people have really gotten a lot out of it. We've sold many of these. Yes, and, yes. Um, it's been great and I use it and I journal and I'm not going to, you know, promote something that I don't believe in myself or do myself. Yes. Right. It actually helped us to brand and to publish our journals. So we're yes. excited about yes. it. Thank you. Yes. So it's my contents and her book, her yes. journal with all her information in it for her ministry. And I've done that for about five or six ministries. And you can look on my home, uh, on my website, which is on call prayer.org and you'll see branding and you can see different uh, covers like destinies destiny X and so that to me that's part of my quiet time in my sanctuary now also um, uh, you know be very specific when we pray it says in mark 10 10 it's uh, uh, sorry uh, it says Excuse me, let me look at the scripture. Mark 10, 36. Um, Jesus is asking his disciples, what do you want me to do for you? So be specific. And a good habit to form. This is amazing. When you get up in the morning, and this is in the Bible, it says, praise God from sunrise to sunset. That's Psalm 113, 3. Also, this is the deal. I like to lay there in my bed in the morning before I jump out and put my roller skates on and go crazy for the day. Mm -hmm. There is a scripture in Psalm 4-4 that says, meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Now, is that not clear? Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Psalm 4-4. So that is... Those were just some tips that I wanted to share about establishing an intentional lifestyle of prayer with, um, with having the quiet time with the Lord each day. Now, show them the little prayer booklets that you have. I love those. I know oh, okay. I think that are retreat. I that, that one. Those are amazing. I want people to see those. I love the... Okay. Yes, let me show you this one. Okay, this is it right here. Now, uh, you will notice it says on call prayer. My, let me stop right here. My ministry is called on call prayer. And, you know, when we call on God, you don't have to leave a voicemail. You don't, you're not put on hold. He is always on call. And the scriptures say, call upon me, and I'll show you great and mighty things you do not know. So that's why my ministry is called On Call Prayer, because he's on call all the time. Well, I have this little, uh, my smallest little book that I have several books. This is my tiniest. It's this big. It's the size of a business card. And you'll notice on the back, it copyrighted the whole thing, right? But inside the book... It's blank pages. There's not anything printed because you are going to write this book with your words. So how we use it and how Destiny and others use it is you carry this. It's called a pocket prayer book. And you carry it with you all the time. And when you see someone that God leads you to speak to, ask them one question. How can I pray for you today? you will be amazed. People will just be thrown back when you ask them that. I'll give you a couple examples. These are my uh, couple of things that I'll just never forget. I was in the grocery store, and this young woman was checking me out, and I had not seen her before. And she said, well, this is my last day to work. And I, um, and I, I this is, you know, I'm not going to be working here anymore. So I asked her her name, and I said, well, why are you leaving? She said, I've got cancer, and I'm going to start chemo. And I pulled out my pocket prayer book, and I wrote it down. I am going to pray for you. 
And so I wrote it all down, what her details of her, her illness and her name. And she just started to weep. She said, you don't even know me. And you're going to pray for me. And I said, yes, I will be praying for you. And I prayed for her for months. I don't know what happened to her, but she was in my pocket forever. Well, I was at the cleaners just a few weeks ago. And the woman came out to my car after the drive up part. She comes out to the car and she's uh, taking my clothes and all. And I said, uh, how can I pray for you today? And she just, well, would you please pray for my brother? Mm. And I said, yes, what is your name? Michelle. I wrote his name down, author. And, and she didn't tell me what to pray about. I said, well, God knows the need. She didn't say anything but his name. She went back in the cleaners. She turned around and came back and said, would you also pray for my son? And she gave me his name. So I want to tell you, that if you will carry some, this with this is on my website uh, you can see all about this but it, it is just amazing how God works when when it's written down and you intentionally pray for other people yes yes now Sharon do you have a and I love that you do that and I always I'll call you sometimes and say will you pray for me for this this and this because I believe in the power of agreement and yes. the word says we're two or more gathered. He's in yes. our midst. Yes. And I think yes. that, you know, the more prayers that get ascended up to heaven, you know, I, I just believe in the power of agreement. That's right. Exactly. You know, exactly. There are particular scripture like that comes to mind that covers everything with prayer. I know you mentioned Mark. Is there a scripture that you sometimes will give to comfort people when they're asking for prayer? Maybe if there's something going on with a loved one or job or divorce or anything that's you know exactly well yes it's that it's that my ministry what I uh, what my mission is is to move people from their own strength to God's strength through a purpose-filled intentional lifestyle of prayer but my scripture is that Jeremiah 33 3 call to me and I will answer you. It doesn't say I may, I, I think about answering you. It says I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me and I will answer you. That is such a wonderful, wonderful promise. Yes. So, uh, there's three deadly D's of prayer. There's distraction, discouragement, and doubt. And we, we can doubt so much that, in fact, God gave me a word for the year, and it's called uh, believing prayer. You know, I pray, but do I believe he's going to answer it? Or do I just pray all the time, scream out to God? And so that is, you know, the only, there's only one thing impossible with God. And that is to uh, believe in vain, believe in him in vain. And yeah. so just claiming the scriptures, personalize them. And, you know, one of the things, uh, Destiny, that I wanted to share, this is what I'm all about, is how to pray for your loved ones. Now, here we are in this pandemic, and we need revival in our land. But we need revival in our families. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I've got some members of my family that, that they don't know the Lord. Or if they do, they're not walking the walk. They've strayed away. They're doing, they, they just, they, and we have some, uh, and my husband and I's family, we are sure they don't even think about God. I mean, maybe they are now, but during the pandemic, but uh, you know, who's going to pray for them when I graduate and go to heaven? I may be the only person praying for someone. You may be the only person praying for that, that cousin or that grandchild or that child. And so uh, God uh, gave me five ways to pray. Could I share those with you? Yeah. Okay. Well, this comes from Acts 9, 20 through 25. And if you'll read that scripture late, later, but it's about when Saul, uh, he had been 
saved, delivered, you know. And, and so he's in the town, and they were literally watching the gates to kill him. And so at late at night, we don't know who they are, but these men uh, risked their lives and had a rope and a basket and went through the, uh, the city, the town, and, um, uh, and, and climbed up on the top of the wall and uh, uh, put him in the basket, right? And lowered him over that wall with those ropes, lowered him over that wall. And he was able to escape and he became the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest evangelists. Yeah, in my favorite in the Bible, yeah. Okay, so taking that story, I want to ask everyone, or tell, share with everyone how to hold the rope for your loved one. Because remember this, the basket may be very close to touching the ground, your basket. And so I want to encourage you how to hold the rope for your loved one. And this, God gave me five ways to pray. Now, uh, you don't pray for the addiction specifically. That might be drugs or alcohol or whatever the addiction is. It may be depression. It may be a number of things, okay? But this is how God gave this to me. And I heard it directly from the Holy Spirit. I didn't read it in a book. I didn't hear a pastor it was directly to me. Mm -hmm. So I had a son that was going through a very troublesome time, and I was devastated over it. And I had been praying for a certain addiction. And God said, stop praying about the alcohol. Don't pray anymore. You've been praying 30 years. Pray this way. And I have seen a miracle because mm -hmm. of that. The number one is pray this way, that the scales will fall off their eyes. Yes. yes. Okay? That's found in Acts 9, 18. Number two is for total surrender, that they will totally surrender to God. Joshua 22, 5. The next one is that God will remove their heart of stone and give them a new heart. That's Ezekiel 36, 26. Number four is that they will have a hunger for God, them and me. That's Deuteronomy 4, 29. And then number five is they will become a mighty man or a mighty woman of God. And that's uh, Zechariah 10, 7 and Psalm 112, 1 and 2. These are on the homepage of my website, oncallprayer.com. Dot org. Now, this is what how I pray. Lord, you gave me your son, and now I give you mine. Mm -hmm. And so, if we pray those five ways very intentionally, and first of all, the scales have got to fall off. I mean, but that will happen if we pray. And so, in my case, my son is a mighty man of God and is doing wonderful. Oh. So I just want to encourage everyone that um, about that. And then also, during the pandemic, here we are. We're holding the rope. We're praying for our loved ones. But, you know, we've been kind of on lockdown. And I'm a type A, busy, 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 go, 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 speak, 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 whatever, like you and many people watch. I think we all are. In it's, like, it's just it's still, as it be lockdown and all that, it's been a little difficult now as the weeks march on. And so I found these amazing scriptures. You know, I love God's word. It's just sometimes destiny, it's like he has to talk to me the megaphone. <laughs> so this is the first megaphone message. In Isaiah 37, it says, their strength is to sit still. Now, are we sitting still in the pandemic in our homes? Their strength is to sit still. And then the second uh, scripture, which we're very familiar with in Psalm 46.10, it says, be still. Yes. And watch, and for I am God. 
Be still and know that I am God. Be still. And then lastly, Exodus 14, 13 says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I believe that's what we're going to see during this COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to see the salvation of the Lord. I'm claiming that. Yes, I, I agree yeah. with you. I agree. And our strength comes to sit still. Yes. And you know, with that stand, with that standing still, what a, what a rich word. Thank you so much. Um, I've been taking notes as you've been. I take notes as I'm interviewing folks. This is really good, rich stuff. Um, one thing I believe that people lose sight of, if you will, is they can be still in their quiet place. But, you know, you mentioned all the distractions, everything going on in their mind, everything they have to do. We have to be willing and able to listen to Holy Spirit. That's yeah. the key, to listen to what he's trying to say to us. And yeah. Speak to that a little bit. Well, I, that's why I go back to writing, because I have to remember what I he said, and I, at the time, I think I'll never forget it, <laughs> but I do about other things. And so when I'm praying for God to, to speak to me, um, by journaling, or if you don't even have a journal, just write it on a notepad, but whatever he says to write it down and focus on that, because that's the Holy Spirit speaking yeah. to you. Yes. That's great. That's great. And I'm like you, I believe in journaling wholeheartedly. Um, you know, it's almost like you're writing to God, you're talking to God. Yes. Some people that aren't comfortable speaking out loud, your right. journaling is really a great way to communicate to him. And he, he has spoken to me several, several times through journaling. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, you can just write a letter, God, <laughs> and you can just pour your heart out, pull out, pour your anger your frustration. I mean, you can be real with him. You're feeling it anyway. So write it all down. You can burn it later or tear it up or whatever. But it, it, it you know, this, this is the key thing. Uh, so even psychologists say this. Uh, writing, it takes thoughts and, and grief from the subconscious to the conscious, puts it down on paper so you can go on with living. You've got all this stuff stuffed in you. You write it, get it out of you, get it written down. Then you can tear it up, burn it, or whatever. But it 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 cleanses you. It it just relieves all of that stress that's built up because you're you're stuffing it. And that's why I love to write. And and then it's I deal with it. And sometimes I see things I don't even realize I'm feeling. That I've got it written down and I can deal with it and ask God to help you with that. Yes, I agree. Amen. As we're getting ready to close, is there anything that you feel the Lord would want you to share with the viewers? Or any encouraging words? I mean, this has been fantastic. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, you know, the familiar scripture that with God, all things are possible. Yes. You know, what's amazing to me, a lot of the interviews that I've had over this course of, of COVID-19 time frame, that seems to be the scripture, that one in Psalms 91, that yeah. all yeah. the speakers are speaking out. So God's yeah. definitely been downloading that, I think, in everyone. With me, all things are possible. Do you believe who I say that I am? Do you believe that I can do what I say that I can do? Right. Be specific in our prayer life to him. He wants us to be specific and he wants us to be real. You know, I think about David, how real David was with the Lord. Yes. He was so raw and real with God. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and it, but he was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he was. As much as he sinned, he still was. And yes. so I just, that is so encouraging. You know, the scriptures say, is anything impossible with God? No. Nothing is impossible. And you know what? He has every detail of our very lives in the palm of his hand. And so he will perfect that, which, which concerns you. So those are, there's, you know, there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. We don't need them in heaven. We need to use them now. So we need to claim them 
and we need to stay in the word and we need to pray intentionally developing a lifestyle of intentional prayer because god is always on call he is he's a 24 7 20 i mean just yes. he is always on call i loved when you shared that with me at the retreat that we had a couple of some years ago um, with Swimma, you said, God's always on call. And I was like, he is. He is, he is. So that's great. So um, as we're getting ready to close, tell the viewers one more time how to get in touch with you. Okay. Um, I have a website and a lot of the things I've shared today are on that. And it's oncallprayer.org. O N. C A L L P R A Y E R dot O R G. Also, uh, my email, and there's a contact page there. You can uh, you know, contact me that way. Also, if you want to leave a prayer request, there's two places on the site where you can leave a prayer request, and we will, my team, and we will be praying for you. And uh, my email is Sharon Hill. It's S H A R O N H I L L at oncallprayer.org. Again, that's on the website. That's as well as my, uh, as you know, my everything is there. So thank you so much. And speaking of prayer, we have the National Day of Prayer coming up, uh, which is for the whole country, uh, National Day of Prayer, and the Christian Women in Media will be doing a National Day of Prayer, and you can go to the SWIMA, C-W-I-M-A dot org website. You can click on that link. You'll see a flyer that says National Day of Prayer, and join in. Um, many of our president leaders in the presidential um, club will be praying, and Sharon, Sue Ellen, and Tracy Mitchell, our leaders, will be Praying us, praying for us that day, and a couple of others. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be powerful. There's power in prayer. God, like she said, mountains move when we pray. Yes. We yes. encourage you all to be praying for our president, president, our leadership, our nation. This pandemic, this pandemic will stop. It will cease. Yes. As she said earlier, we're in a time of revival, not just in our nation, but with our families, family yes. revival. I loved when you said that. That was powerful. Yes. So, Sharon, thank you so much. It's always an honor to be with you. And family, we thank you for tuning in today to Destiny X, making a difference for this next generation. You can reach us at destinyx.tv. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.